Yeah, welcome to the class. Um, and today we've just going to, like I said in the chat, um, it's going to be another interesting topic on um, towage and, um, and salvage. Towage yeah. and salvage. So yes. we're going to be kicking start now. And I will say I, I welcome everyone um, to the class. And um, I, it's going to be nice if we have some feedback on it um, as well. So okay. let's talk about towage. We all know what towage is, right? Like um, we see the big boats coming in and we request for a towage, I mean for a tow or a towage contract um, to tow the vessel in. But there is also um, some situations where the vessels break down and then we can require you know, a tow to come and rescue in such situation. And at the end of this class, we'll be able to determine if what was um, given to the evergreen vessel was storage or was salvage um, in that sense. So just, I'm gonna concentrate more on salvage because that's where the interesting topic is um, tonight. But to give us a greens of, um, of storage, Towage is, is a contract that is governed, is, is a contract that is governed by ordinary, um, just a contract law. So for instance, if I require a towage of um, a company named Lamnaco, what I need to do is there are terms and condition of contract that the vessel would have with my own vessel in order to carry out such um, operation. So meaning we cannot, go out, we cannot do anything unless this contract is being, um, is being signed. And it's what is going to be signed in the contract is, of course, the arranged purpose, what am I towing, and where am I towing it to? And of course, the tariff and the, and the rates of the vessels. So for instance, an anchor handling top, um, top supply vessel out there um, at the sea, we all know how they go about with and contracts, they come on board and they on hire the vessel. It might be just a spot charter. It might be um, a one year time charter. It might be a voyage um, charter as well. So these are these are the contracts that we have in place in hiring a towage services. So it's going to be very, very different from a salvage, um, salvage contract. And also the towage um, services, they are not voluntarily. We are not going to say we want to voluntarily come and work for you. So even though your vessel is wrecked, even though your vessel grounded, towage services for them to come and render their service to you, like I said, it goes through a lot of a, some, I will not say a lot of process, but it goes through the normal procedure of chartering the vessels and of course, um, signing um, contracts. And of course, it's not going to be tantamount to any salvage reward um, unless like some peril arises. So for instance, if my vessel grounded and then my, um, my company calls on a towage company to say, oh, so, 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 so vessel has grounded. Can we tow, can you help us in towing the vessel? That is the only term and condition they have assigned to it. But when they, when they get there and they find out that, oh, this vessel is about to tumble, or this vessel, there is oil leakage that is going on on the vessel. Or this vessel, there is fire on. There is about to be fire on board. Now they will carry out extra services, which is now what you call salvage, which is where exactly we are going today. But I need us to stress that the uh, the towage is different in the sense that we already know our reward. For instance, if you are chattering me for 10,000 pounds, we know our own reward. And why am I stressing this? Because the examiners are very tricky when it comes to maritime law in the terms of requesting for towage and salvage. And they're gonna ask you, as a master, your vessel grounded. That is how the question normally starts. As me, um, in my own experience, in my own exam experience and others as well. How, what do you do when your vessel is grounded? And be like, oh, we request for a towage from our company. Okay, and you request for a towage from the um, from the company, and the tow is not coming. Are you gonna wait, or is there any other thing that you will check? 
And where he is going is this. Because for you to say, oh, okay, your vessel is in on air and your vessel has grounded and you require a toll in, in the sense that you have debalanced, you have tried everything, you have even started jettisoning cargo and your vessel is not going afloat. And the, the weather the situation is deteriorating. For the when, when you when the weather situation is deteriorating and your company is still signing a contract for a for a very cheap top supply company to come and tow your vessel, by the time they get to your own vessel, the deteriorating the weather or environmental factors that it's not favoring your vessel at that moment might as cause a greater damage. So that is why as a chief officer and as a master, and even as a second officer, it's your place also to advise that, oh, we might need to try a salvage company. And salvage company, that is when we look into factor that how long can the ship survive here? And like the masters in um, ISM, the master has the overriding authorities when it comes to safety and environmental protections of the vessels and of lives. How long can my vessel survive there? So the master has the right also to make, okay, let's go on salvage. Now, what is salvage? And like I said, salvage in this maritime law and um, technically is much more quicker than towage. Towage is more of, I am telling you what exactly to do. I am telling you when to when you have to do this. And I'm telling you where to where. And this is the amount and that is all stop. But salvage is, oh, my vessel is grounded. I've looked around, I can't see anyone. The salvage company will be there waiting for you to call them. And once you call them, there is no formal agreement like the towage agreement. There are laws, which the laws, there are laws and articles, which I call them, if you are writing, I call them Article 13, Article 14, and the Scopic Law. The Scopic Law is what I call the compact, uh, Special Compensation P and I Clause. And I will go into those three ones. Those are the three major ones that are binding salvage law. So you call a salvage company, oh, my vessel is grounded. And once it says your vessel is grounded, the only thing you normally we, we do is by phone, that is where we do the contract. And what they are to do is to make sure they do everything to salvage your vessel, everything to salvage your vessel. And they are not bound by ordinary contract law. They are binded by admiralty law. Admiralty law in the sense that, and also a salvage can also be a voluntary action. So a voluntary action in which they must be rewarded. And also, like I told you about salvage, I mean, towage, like a towage is, oh, this is what we are, we are going to do. This is where we are going to do the services. But in a salvage, the reward is dependent on measures of success. I repeat, reward is, I mean, the, the, the reward is dependent on measures of success of the towage agreements. And there's always like, I'm going to go into Article 13, 14 and Scopic Law. The Article 13 is no cure, no pay, which is a reward will be determined by what you have given um, to me. Now let's go over to the notes and the slide that I have, um, I have for today with this background and it's going to really help us um, a lot, just a second. Um, when you can see my screen, please let me know. Can everybody see my screen? Affirm, affirmative. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, this is um, the salvage law. And like I told you, we there's no need to stress more on the towage, but we need to first understand where the limitation of towage starts from and ends, the disadvantages and the advantages of it. Because an examiner wants, doesn't want you to jump into salvage without trying towage. Because also primarily as a master, you need to be able to determine, and I mean, I'm talking of being a master, it's, I'm not talking of being um, a master only within the four walls of your country of origin or wherever 
we, I mean, wherever you are selling or wherever you're calling from. But I'm talking of international standard as well, which is what we should be looking at. So for instance, you are even in Gibraltar or you are in Singapore, the salvage and the two-way law still applies there. So what happens? So the salvage convention, salvage, marine salvage, as you can see here, is the rescue of what? Of wrecked or disabled ship or its cargo from loss at sea. Wreck or what? Disabled ship or cargo from loss at ship. So the salvage doesn't stop at um, the ship itself. The salvage might even stop and might continue to a cargo. A cargo might be lost at sea as well. A cargo might have fallen um, overboard. And the way the salvage is even well structured, just like the general average when we are arguing argument is, the sweet part of the maritime law is, it's kind of leaves leverage for people um, to express some opinions and for some argument. Because in salvage, it's a voluntary action. So a salvage company can see a container right there in the middle of the sea. And according to the admiralty law that it is under, can pick up this container and take down to the owner. As long as there is a success rate, the owner is responsible to pay that salvage company, even though it did not send the salvage company any message. So this is how it's quite interesting um, it is. As long as the ship is in Peru, as long as the cargo is in Peru, the, 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 the salvage company has the right to go there. But once the cargo, once the, 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 the ship is declaring that I am not in Peru, I am still well under control, I am the master on board, and I'm not requesting any salvage, I have requested for towage, then the salvage company do not have any rights on, on, on such. So the law of salvage is a principal maritime law whereby anybody who helps recover, anybody, it's not only any person, it's not only whether you have a salvage company, but of course opening a salvage company now is a very big, big one in case anybody's listening to me that wants to open any company. But anyone who is able to recover any person's ship or cargo in Peru at sea is entitled to what? To a reward, compensate, uh, commensurate to the value of the self company. And then the amount of the reward, of course, like I've said, is determined subsequently at, you know, hearing of the merits in a maritime law. Okay, how much does this work? What is the worth of the container? What is the worth of the, um, of the container in accordance with Article 13? Article 13 and 14 are the major um, key principles of international salvage, 1989. Article 13 and Article 14. And we will go down to those two, um, those two articles so we can all have a very brief um, understanding um, of, on it. But also we can see that the English Admiralty laws kind of define it to be, to be what a, a voluntary successful service. So for instance, that was when it started becoming a play into, okay, what if my salvage operation is not successful? What will happen? So for instance, let's take it to the essence that um, your vessel was going aground. Your vessel was going aground. Oil was pouring out. And then you request a salvage company. Like I said, your vessel was going aground. You request a salvage company. And then the salvage company brings in three talks. And we can all know the amounts. If you can just imagine yourself as a ship owner, the amount, the time, the efforts, the crew uh, management. Uh, what I'm saying is the resources that you are putting in to this to really rescue the ship that is grounded. Then all of a sudden, this ship, for one reason or the other, for some stubborn reasons, the, the, the operation was not successful. The ship grounded, finished. Under Article 13, it's called a no cure, no pay. Article 13 states no cure, no pay. So what does no cure, no pay means? No cure, no pay means if you have not been able to salvage my own ship, there is no way I'm able to give you um, any compensation. I'm just going to try and open that, yeah. So this is Article 13. In any way, 
the reward will be fixed in view to encouraging survey operation, taking into account following, um, following criteria with regards to the orders presented below. That presented below the self value of the vessel and other properties, the skills and effort of the salvo, the measure of success, the nature and the degree of the danger, the skills and the effort of the salvo in solving the vessel, other property and life, and it goes on. But it goes on to, to tell us that the reward as well is not going to be given unto you until you have a successful operation. So this was the kind of um, notion that was going on with the salvage company that, oh, you just imagine now my, my vessel is grounding and I'm requesting a salvage company. Then that was just Article 13 they were dealing with. And this was just the background of it. And it looked, okay, my vessel is grounding and I need a salvage company. But if the salvage company looks at it and says, no, this is beyond um, repair, or the, 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 there's a low possibility of them rescuing the vessel, the salvage company has the right to turn around and say no, because they will not be paid. They will not be rewarded. So this has now brought more increase. I mean, this has brought even more disputes in the maritime sector of ship wrecking and the salvo companies are rejecting. But if for any instance, the service company is to analyze your situation and say, no, there will be a reward from this. The service company goes there, but the salvage company, the, so they can claim if for instance, the ship is 120 million pounds, they can claim as much as 120 million pounds from the ship owner. So this, is, this was the, 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 the nature and the degree of how the salvage company was being rewarded, but also how it was very risky for the salvage company not to be paid in any, um, in any way at all. So that was under Article 13. And everybody started scantling. The shipping industry might be suffering because salvage companies are not abided by this admiralty law, are not able to rescue. What can we do? And they brought out Article 14, special uh, compensation. So this special compensation, if the server has carried out a salvage operation in respect of a vessel by which itself or cargo threatened damage to the environment and has failed to earn a reward under Article 13. So I will repeat, if it has carried out salvage operation, which by itself or its cargo threatened damage to the environment. So for instance, I will give an instance. If for instance, like I give that first example, a ship was grounded oil was leaking out and the salvage company looks at it and was not able to successfully rescue the ship that means there was no cure no pay no cure no pay article 13. this the owner of the property under admiralty law and under article 13 is not required to give the salvage company anything because you did not it, what your your mission was not successful so even though you brought down five helicopters, even though you brought down five thugs, even though you brought down, and this was this was a very interesting um, conversation in the um, International Maritime Organization courts and other courts as well, because you did not rescue my own vessel. But oh, we used so much money, we even spent up to a million pounds on so, 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 and so. No, you still did not carry out the rest operation. It was not successful. You are you're still going to lose. But now under Article 14, it now tells us, okay, on the admiralty law now put it into place as long as they are able to rescue the property from the from the environmental damage so just for instance i'm very used to a uh, nigerian um, on a port in port harcourt in the river state the vessel just block the whole channel and on blocking the whole channel, we bring in a salvage operation to say to, to, to say what well, come and help us rescuing the vessel. If the salvage operation was not successful in rescuing the vessel, but was able to rescue at least that marine environment, then the salvage company under Article 14 is to be compensated. I repeat, the salvage company under uh, under Article 14 is to be compensated to up to 30% of the expenses incurred. And that's when it went on to, um, to, to, to Article 14. He said, it shall be entitled to a special compensation from what from the owner of that vessel, equivalent to ex expenses 
So like I said, Article 13 was equivalent, and it's very important. Article 13, it was equivalent to the um, value of the cargo or value of the ship. But Article 14 here is equivalent to the expenses that it used. So Article 14, if you are not able to save the whole ship, let's say the ship is 120 million pounds, you are not able to save salvage that ship. You are not able to save the old ship. You have lost on claiming up to 120 million pounds. But if you are able to save the marine environment, and I get for instance on airport in River State, Nigeria, that you are able to rescue that, um, that, that, that port from further damage, further damage source like, you know, fire, the circulated to other vessels, further damage source like oil pollution, um, oil pollution on the on the vessel, also further damage just like there will be wreckage right there at the middle of the um, of the sea, which might cause blockage, which just like the evergreen in the Suez Canal um, two two months ago. If you are able to do that, then you might not be you might not be um, what's the word? You might not be able to claim up to a hundred and twenty million pounds, which is the amount of the ship, but bring out your expenses, the number of blah, blah, blah you have used, the, the amount that you have used, the, 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 money that, the money that you have used, and then let's calculate it. And of course, they will give them 30 to a maximum of even 30% of the expenses incurred by the server. So this became interesting to server to even know that, okay, even if the ship is sinking, of course, the maritime, um, the, 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 the marine environment, I'm going to go there and protect it. And they are not um, going to say, oh, is, is, this is the amount. So they inflated this amount. It became another interesting one. Remember, the salvo in Article 13 did not want to do it because, they, because when that law was just there on Article 13, they were like, oh, no, we cannot go ahead and go and be rescuing vessels. And when the vessels go down and die, then we are not going to get anything. But then Article 14 now came in to help them and says, oh, look, come and let me go and rescue. And then under the average charity law, they must give you um, 14, uh, I mean, they must give you up to 30% of what we are to be entitled, of what you have used. Then, okay, fine, very interesting. So they use even $1 million or so in salvaging, and yes, the amount goes up to that. $1 million in trying to do one of, in trying to salvage the situation. But what they claim for is up to $5 million. And because this is nothing anybody can check. So this became another one for the ship owners to even start driving the salvage company away. To say, come, you cannot just be inflating amounts like this. But yeah, Article 14 gives us that right. So let's see now what's saying here. Yeah, if in circumstances set out in paragraph one, the salvage or the salvage operation, has prevented or minimized danger. Yeah, and it did not even say it stopped the danger. It might have prevented or minimized danger. The special compensation under Article 14, payable by the owner to the server under Paragraph 1, may be increased to a maximum of 30% of the expenses by the server. So the server uses 100,000 100, pounds and the server claims is 300,000 pounds. You are not even giving 300 pounds. You are giving him 30% more of the 300,000 pounds. Moreover, the tribunal, if deemed it fair, may do the bearing in mind and relevant criteria set out in Article 13 may increase with special compensation for that. So meaning arbitrarily might even look like, oh, we will move on. The server can even claim of up to the full amount of the cargo and the ship itself. But in no event shall the total increase be more than 100% of the expenses. And that was where they put the clause there. You should not claim now up to more than under, I mean more than hundred percent of the container. So in full essence, if my ship is one million pounds at the sea, the salvo company can come down, rescue my ship, and claim one million pounds under Article Thirteen. If my ship is one million pounds at the sea, the salvo company can come, claim up to, I mean, claim, I mean, do the operation, and if not successful, fine, he can claim. I need so 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 hundred thousand pounds, five hundred thousand pounds, because these are this just what for the equipment that I've used for my people that I've used for the tug for the fuel and everything. And you are and I'm not going to collect five hundred thousand pounds. I'll collect thirty percent more of five hundred thousand pounds. So this became 
a fight also in the um, in the arbitrary um, as well. And five went on to say that, see, if the salvo has been negligent and thereby failed to prevent and minimize damage to the environment, it might be deprived of the old or part of special compensation due under this article. So now this is where the salvo will fully lose. If we look at article five, and so this is, this is very, very interesting. No. If in <laughs> JJ is saying a oh, while, but but yeah, that is that that is how it is. So maritime law is kind of a very interesting one that brings so much article, and we try to see that we try to see how conf um, confusing it is with the general average last two weeks, and we kind of see how interesting again it is that we we we, we will fight when it comes to this. So if in, uh, you are not, you didn't rescue. Now, what he's trying to say, both Article 13 and Article 14, if you are not able to rescue the ship itself, you have lost the total amount that you were to collect from the ship. And like I told you, if the ship is 120 million pounds, under Article 13, you did a successful operation, you can claim up to 130 million pounds. 14, if you rescue, if you did an operation and you were not successful, under Article 13, you cannot claim anything. But Article 14, you can now claim what? The money that you use in rescuing the ship. And like I keep saying, I'm sorry for using the word ship. It is not only ship. It is what? Cargo as well. And I started off by saying that a server company from the arbitrary law can see your cargo on the sea, know it's your cargo, rescue that cargo, and then come and claim the exact amount of that cargo from your hand. So if, for instance, now let's come back again, Article 14 tells you that, oh, we cannot rescue this ship, but we were able to save this ship from damaging environment. Or we did not even rescue the ship from damaging, we minimized the damage to the environment. And you can clearly prove that in a court of law, the expenses you used, the money you used, in claim, I mean, in doing it, which of course will come from me. I can book anything. This is no matter of booking um, how much fuel I use. This is a matter of booking, oh, this is my own fee, my, my service fee, my service charge, which can go up to any amount. And then you claim 30% of it. Are you following me? You claim 30% of it if you are able to rescue, and not only rescue, minimize the damage. And so the word minimize now, it's open for argument. To what extent do you minimize? Is it just by a cube or you just close one tank and the thing did not come out? But to what extent? But that is not for also for me and you, it's for people in the law courts to say, oh no, that was not a uh, reasonable prevention. I mean, that was not even a, a mini, reasonable minimization, if you know what I mean. But if for any instance, the salvo, did not rescue the ship. And then the salvo cannot prove that he prevented or minimized the damage. He has totally lost. Are you following me? He has totally lost. He cannot claim Article 13 and he cannot claim Article 14. I want to take a pause here and um, let's, let's hear one or two discussions and let's see if anybody has any question on what I'm saying, before then we go into um, the scopic clause. Scopic clause is after Article 14, and how you as a master can request for a salvage operation. Does anybody have any question? Um, then I'm just going to pick somebody to try and so that I will just understand. Yeah, who is speaking? JJ. Uh, well, uh, one is, uh, yeah. the, this, uh, this topic is a very interesting topic, though, and I just believe it's a topic that can always lead to arguments and arguments. And we can always, we always pick this evergreen. Because my mind is just going back to evergreen. Who is paying who? But here now you are putting law. We don't know if there's another counter law to this because this is more like a lawyer case now. Uh, the question I wanted to ask before was uh, who determined the amount? 
to be paid to the to the salvo? Like, do we have any uh, um, like um, should I say court or this thing that determine that oh this and this and this have been done? Who now determine the amount or, or but do you say that? I think we lost him there. Okay, so I have a question too. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, my question is um, with regards to special compensation, um, is it? Sorry, there, there are two special compensation. I want to know if it's the special compensation P and I clause or the Article 14. No, the Article 14. Okay. So I want to know is it? Is, has it been mandated that if a salvo tries to attempt salvaging a property and he 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 he's, he ends up saving the environment and then is it mandated that he he must be compensated like the special compensation is this mandated that he must be compensated or is it just out of will that the the salve property owner will will give him the compensation? Um, so sorry, I, I, this is a very interesting question, but I didn't catch it. Can you can you break it down? I want to try and understand. Okay, if a salvo attempts to salvage a property, yeah, and then within the salvage operation, he he because of his attempt, he used his skill and everything, and he saved the environment. Yeah, is has it now become compulsory? Is there any part of the law that said he must be compensated? Or it is out of just goodwill that the owner of the sad property will give him special compensation. Yeah, thank you very much. That's a very good question. Um, under Article 14, under Article um 14, it is to be compensated as mandatory. As mandatory, yeah. Okay. Under Article 14, it is to be compensated. So, so and, if they don't compensate him, he can even drag them to law and demand for that compensation. Yeah, it's already set down in the law. It's already set down in the law that he has to be compensated for it. It's already okay. set down in the law. So if for any, the only thing now that we are going to take down to the law is, oh, the amount is asking is too much. Because a salver sometimes might always bring a canoe and they will ask for two hundred thousand um, um, dollars. Yeah, I've seen it. I've read of a case like that. Not like a canoe, but a fiber boat to carry out a, an operation, and you're asking for two hundred thousand pounds because this the the the, op, the the equipment it wasn't even a ship. The equipment to salvo was was up to nine hundred thousand pounds. So yeah, wow. if he did not claim under the law, I repeat, under the law, the salvo can request for the amount that he used in salvaging that, uh, that um, property, I said, not only my township, my property, but also he cannot request up to the amount of the property, the value of property. the property itself. You get so what, the, what then are the determinants or the factors that they consider in giving special compensation? Because I know for salvage full operation, the, the value of the property, the expertise, the, the salvo used in saving the property, all of these things are kept into uh, consideration. So what in the case, are they, are, are they the same factors in the case of special compensation? Yeah, in, this, in the case of special um, compensation, I'll go, I'm just going to share this one so that we'll see how they... Uh, Wait, I'm just gonna sh share this now. Yeah, so like I said, even the circumstances, I'm reading um, the, the, the number two, even circumstances, second to paragraph one, the salvage by a salvage um, operation has been able to, has prevented or minimized damage to the environment, the special compensation payable by the owner to the salvage under paragraph one may be increased to a maximum of what? 30, 30%. 30%. Of the end of the expenses incurred by the salvo. So that special is a special compensation. So it's different from the the the, 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 the amount. So, so this is a special compensation itself. It's not like you are compensating the person. So it's not like you will you will not lose. 
because this came as a result of maritime damage to, the, I mean, yeah, envir maritime environmental damage. It was just there were the, the accidents were becoming too much. The salvage company were saying, see, the Article 13 that you are giving us is not making is not good for our business. So we have to make a, a risk assessment of who can we rescue. So when okay, we say, okay. because of, because of the impact of no cure, no pay, so they were it was coming on their head. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you just imagine you have a company, you have a salvage company now, you have five stock boats, and then all of a sudden, okay, just imagine, um, let's come again to Evergreen in the Suez Canal, and you sent your five boats down there, and yet you are not able to rescue it. The amount you've paid for the for the salvage, the, the night, and then, okay, let's say you have an helicopter, you, you, you spent all those money there, and your, your decision was not successful, and they tell you, sorry, no cure, no pay. No pay. How will you feel about that? So people just keep well, living operations. Okay, thank you. I understand, sir. Yeah, and, and then to your second question, who determines? The server determines how much he has used. The, the server tells, see, I have used so, 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 so amount in salvaging, um, you know, carrying out the salvage for your company. And that's what, you know, the, 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 the Egypt um, Swiss Canal also are, are kind of doing that. This is the amount we use in salvaging. And you dare not question as long as the, the, the amount is not more than the, the amount of the property. Okay. Okay. So please come again. You said you said it cannot be questioned. If somebody said, if uh, practically the person pay like uh, uh, um, less than fifty thousand dollars and it's giving five hundred thousand dollars, so it is not questionable. Yeah, when it's, it's even is obvious. Yeah, it's not it's not questionable in the sense that give me. Break down five naira, ten naira, twenty naira. No, no, no. Or it's questionable in the sense that oh, the ship owner might 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 take it to court and, and say this is not this thing. And then fine, let's go and drag it, you know, in court because this amount is kind of too much. But that's up to the um arbitrary courts as well to you know to really determine. But upon the law that has been set down, as long as you are able to minimize. And that is that's the interesting part. It's not even saying you are able to fully rescue the environment, environment as long as you're able to minimize the impact of the marine environment. You can also claim not only 100% of the expenses that you have used, but 130%, that is 30% on top of the expenses that you have used. So now what is the expenses that you have used? And from technical knowledge that we have, they have made us to read and we have been able to understand and have seen also in, in, in the law courts, the, the, the salvo company always, I mean, most of the time, even puts more money. So let's say, for instance, they use 1,000 naira recharge cash. Only for instance, 1,000 naira recharge cash. It's not going to be 1,000. It's going to be 60,000 naira recharge cash and calling this, calling that, calling this. So these are expenses which you, you cannot say, oh, recharge cash is 1,000 naira. No, you don't, you don't come there. The only thing you can say, this total amount, I'm sorry, this one down, but let's meet in court. Is it, is your property, up to so 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 so, so amount. Are, are you going to are you going to defend that? So this is this is these are the interesting parts of the survey uh, company. Is that well understood? Yes, sir. Yeah. So <laughs> I know yeah, it's quite shocking as well. But I also need us to point out two things, two things as well. Um, there's what they call the. Um, sorry, I'm going to digress a bit, but this is really quite important for us to catch. There are two common um, laws of the salvage, and there's what they call the contractor um, salvage and the common law salvage. Contractor salvage and the common law salvage. So, for instance, let's say um, your ship, the instance I gave in the beginning, that the ship was grounded, ship is grounding, oil is coming out, and the master picks up the phone. Oh, I need a towage. That is the first thing the examiner wants you to request if the examiner is trying to get you to this question. He doesn't want you to go on towage because we have all seen the dynamics behind the towage and the salvage. I mean, he doesn't want you to go straight to salvage, but he also wants you to put consideration of salvage into it, which will be the second part. But you also need to put consideration of salvage, not at the detriment of expenses. Oh, I don't want the company to incur expenses. So let's come back again. The captain picks up a phone. My vessel is grounding, this and that. Oh, the storage company, you are right there in Oné. The storage company is coming from South Africa. No, we cannot wait for the storage company to come in South Africa if the weather is deteriorating or if this thing is really causing um, a, a maritime environmental hazard. 
please pick up a salvage company. You have the right also. You can pick up a salvage company. You request for a salvage. And when the salvage is coming, we have, we, that is what they call a contractor salvage. So a contractor salvage is when a salvo makes a salvage agreement with the owner of the ship or the maritime property when the vessel is in Peru, when the prop or the property is in Peru. That when I mean Peru, it distress emergency. So if there was an agreement between both of us for you to come and salvage my 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 vessel or my property or my maritime container that is in the water, that's a contractor, that's a contractor salvage. And that's what the examiner likes to, I mean, it's a very interesting one that would like us to know in common in, in maritime law as well. But like I told you, salvage can be a voluntary action, but I must be compensated. <laughs> salvage yeah, but, uh, can I be think one of, one of the regulations about the salvage is it has to be voluntary. So when, yeah, like just, I said, when you enter into contract before the salvage, then it, it's no longer a salvage, if I understand. The thing about the salvage, that when they say it's voluntary as well, the, the salvo can say, I don't want to come. Oh, I still feel sympathy, and then I will come to rescue your vessel. But okay. there are two clauses for salvage, which is very important. I mean, I thank you for bringing this one, because this is the reason why I paused to bring out these two laws. Now, the second one is the common law salvage. Like I said, the first one is the contractor of service. And like I said, after this one, we're going into scopic. I, I pray the time for me. So if we go into scopic, and then we'll go into how the master, because the master has to request for a salvage. The salvage company can be there, but if you have not requested for a salvage company that you, you everything is in hand, is there storage in the place, the salvage company can be obliged to say, okay, we are not coming. And then you, as the master or the company can say, no, we do not need your services. It's not by force. In Nigeria, in Pigeon, they said, no, by force. But if the property or the ship is there as well, then the salvo also can go into a voluntary salvage or a pure salvage. This is now what they call, they call it a voluntary salvage or a pure salvage to rescue the vessel, I mean, to rescue a maritime property or a vessel from Peru. As long as the salvo can prove that this property or this ship is in an emergency, then the salvo can go down there and rescue it without any contract, without, sorry, yeah, without any contract, without any agreement, without any understanding with the owner. So this is common law salvage. Now I repeat again, there are two salvage Contractor salvage, which is when a salvage makes a simple or enter into a complex or simple um, agreement for a salvage um, company with a salvage company for what to rescue the ship or rescue the maritime property for the ship owner or for the maritime property owner. But common law, I saw a property on the vessel, I saw a ship, or I saw what a container, or I saw a ship that is wrecked. The salvo can go there according to the common, common law and rescue, but these two, they must be compensated. And the same compensation applies under Article 13 and under Article 14. Omar, are you, are you following now? So it is not yes, fully I'm like the guy will say, I want to do it on my own. When you do it on your own, it's common law. When you now do it in agreement with the ship owner, it is contractor um, salvage, um, salvage law. As well. So when you do it in agreement, it is now the ship, the, 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 the captain, sorry, might say, Oh, we need a salvage operation. And salvage operation is not limited to towage. That's the difference because I've been my own exam uh, when I was a um, master was what's the difference between towage and salvage. And what was the things that one of the things the examiner was looking for was what are the what are the limitations? So towage might be I'm towing so 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 vessel from and pillar A to pillar B. Salvage is, I'm going to salvage this comp, this, this vessel till I take it, and that is the success rate, till I take it to, a, to the nearest, safest port or to a point of safety. So if, for instance, you pull me away for fire 
and then you drag me down to the middle of the sea. It is not a success race. So we can go on and on on this lovely discussion on what they even define, because even on the Article 13, there's what they even not define as success rate. Okay, even the guy, you just brought him down to, 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 to on airports, you left him at the anchorage there, but the guy is still in emergency, he cannot start up his vessel, he cannot do anything. I mean, he's still even grounded there at on airport. You cannot claim that you've done a successful um, operation um, as well. But if you are able to fully successful and you're able to prove that you successfully salvage such this thing, then you can claim that, okay, yeah, it's either a salvage contractor salvage or a common law, um, common law salvage. If, is, that, is that fully understood? Yes, sir. With that, I would like us to, to go down to the next one, which is what I call scopic. So, under this article 14, you guys are the, 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 the salvage company started exploring, I mean, exploiting the, the ship owners. For some reason, they give high amount, 30% again. Then that is when special compensation P and I clause came under the article 14. And this, this came as a supplementary to article 14. So it's, it's a compensation that is done by the P and I. The P and I company, the P and I insurance were the ones who are now taking over. And this is a special compensation added by the P and I and applied if it's a voluntary, it's a voluntary invoked by the server and agreed by the ship owner. So in both of them has to agree. So like I said, it's voluntary and then is agreed by the server um, owner or the master as well but in agreeing this they have to invoke the scopic clause so if the scopic clause is if for instance then they uh, they are able to say oh fine we can salvage the vessel but we if they for instance they did not salvage the vessel then they put on to um what you call it put on to article 14 because Article 14 sometimes is now even more expensive than you know Article um, 13. The P and I um, club will make this compensation under Article 14. The P and I club will make this compensation under um, under Article 14. But for that to happen, they will want to click a scopic clause. We we'll keep a, a scopic um, yeah scopic clause because now what I want to show you guys now is the agreement. To show that it is not voluntary, I'll show you now the agreement that a master and a salvage company can make prior to a salvage um, operation. So three important parts, again, as I try to close these um, three articles, is one, the what, the Article 13, which is no key or no pay. Then the Article 14, which is the 130% of what you have used if you are able to actually save the maritime environment and not save the maritime environment in any way, but minimize the maritime the impact to the maritime environment. Then Article 14, I mean, I mean the scopic um, clause is if the contractor, if let's say, for, and the contractor here is the, is, is the master of the person, invoke scopic already, he's saying that see, no cure, no pay, but then the P&I will pay you 130% if you are able to at least um, salvage the, the situation on the, um, on the vessel. So if please, it, before, before you go further, I want to understand this, uh, this uh, the 30% of this scope. Is it additional on top of the 100% you're going to be paid that they will pay you additional 30% as scope? Yeah, special compensation, you'll be paid additional at 30%. Okay, aside from the main compensation, they will now still compensate to another additional 30%. Uh, the, the main compensation is the amount, the whole compensation that you have to be compensated is the amount that you are using in salvaging this, this, this company. I mean, this, this product or this uh, marital property or the ship, and then you have to now be compensated with the 30%. That's additional. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, 
I'll stop this here now and I'm going to Just a second. Uh, I was going to show us. Uh, just a second. Yeah, not soon. Yeah, can everyone see my screen? This is the Lloyd Standard Form or Salvage Agreement. This Lloyd Standard Form of, of um, salvage agreement and here is the lois open form the latest one before that we normally use was 2011 and now we have the 20 um the 2020 2020 as well which is the latest one so before we used to crank they will ask us so which form are you going to fill we say lof 2011 but now there's lof 2020 and they, of course examiner in uk made us to cram this old stuff but made us to climb article seven, I mean, um, clause seven, which is what is the scopic clause incorporated into this agreement. So you might be a master on the vessel, your vessel, you don't need to sign. All these things will be done by what? By radio. Oh, my vessel is sinking, my vessel is that. The other thing they will just need, okay, have you got the lawyer's open standard form there? Yeah, now fill it, name of vessels, property to be saved, place, you see, it's a great place of safety, a great place of safety, because this is not common. This is contractor salvage. So a great place of safety, then a great currency in our world. They are not agreeing that how much you, I mean, they are not agreeing how much, they are agreeing the currency that will be, will, we should come, I mean, we should bill you with and you pay. Then the date of this agreement, place of this agreement, then the seventh was now the important one, the scopic in clock. This scopic is not put in this place here, that means we are only dealing with what article 13 and 14. So when 14 bill, I can bill you as, as much as I want, or 13, no cure, no pay. Then the person signing on behalf, and then who is the captain? And like I said, it's not something that both of us will sit down. This agreement, like I told you, this agreement does not need pen and paper. And this agreement can be done verbally. This agreement can be done verbally from, um, from your vessel. So also other things that, they, I mean, that we need to take note of is when um, vessels come to, to, I mean, when a salvage company company comes to come and rescue us, what are your own obligations? And your own obligation is, of course, to, as a master, to comply with them, but it does not, I mean, it does not remove you or exempt you from taking responsibility of your own um, vessels um, as well. And yeah. also, a server, mm -hmm. a server company is not, and I repeat, a server company is not to use a salvage agreement in determining whether to save life at sea. Under SOLAS chapter five, to under safety of um, safety of life at sea, you, you, any company, any vessel, and I repeat, any vessel, be you a server or not a server, your obligation when you see people in distress, when you see lives in distress at sea, is your obligation to save them. So if a salvage company is not contracted for salvage operation, it does not say, oh, unless you contact me for salvage operation before I'll rescue life at sea. So that is another big point that um, we are going to uh, accept as well. And also if a salvage company, um, company also renders its own services to you, if you are the master on board, you must accept, or if you have, um, or you must give a reasonable reason why you did not accept, especially when that versus goes um, um, goes down um, as well. Then due care must be given to minimize, you know, damage to the um, to the environment. So with that, I will draw the cutting from my own side. I hope I've been able to um, <laughs> try to explain to us the storage, the salvage, and the interesting part of it in the maritime uh, law courts. If anybody have any 
question on that. Sir, I've found a note. Yeah, we can hear you. You break into, but we can hear you. Okay, um, sorry, if, if my vest were engaged in a salvage um, operation and compensation is being paid, uh, does the crew have a benefit to us? Uh, is there any facilitate coming to the crew? Uh, JJ, we, I can't catch that. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand that. Is there any way you can quickly type it, please? I would like to hear your question. So he's asking if, <clears throat> if, if the compensation, if after salvage, the crew gets any benefit from the compensation of the salvage. Uh, okay, that's the crew of the vessel. Yes. No, under the maritime obligation, I don't think the crew um, is to salvage the company. But I've seen cases in maritime law as well, where the master have abandoned the ship um, on, the, um, on a very reasonable reason to see that, oh, this ship cannot be salvaged. Um, I mean, they cannot be rescued and if issued an abandoned ship order. And then afterwards, I've come back to rescue the, the, the wreckage and claiming Article 14. It's quite a very interesting one. But the thing yes, is- sir, the, sir, but I think, I think the crew gets, gets part of the share because uh, they give out of the 100% compensation, the reward for the salvage, I think 75% goes to the company and 25% comes on board. And part of the 25%, one, it goes one over three. One over three for the captain and 2% for the other crew on the ship. Mm. Is this under the service convention as well? Yeah, I think that is what we studied under maritime law. I don't know whether it's part of a convention or not, but we did it in maritime law. Because on the vessels, the master is obliged to fully cooperate with the salver during the course of um, of the salvage operation, and that was that was where it stopped on that. On the percentage okay. of how much will be paid to the ship, I think that would be an interesting one for me to 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 really read up. Because that yes. was not something that I don't was know whether the lecturer is part of a regulation or something, but he told us this clearly that the reward that is given to the sal to the salvo, seventy five percent goes to the owner of the ship and thirty five percent goes to the ship, and on this thirty five percent that is coming to the ship, they will divide it into three. One percent is for the captain and two percent for the other crew. I don't know mm -hmm. whether it's part of a regulation or something. Was that in Egypt, right? Yes, yes. That would, that would be a very interesting one. I'm, I'm sure uh, in Egypt we have something always special. But I would really like to know if that was something internationally recognized. Yeah, actually, but, I don't know whether it's part of a regulation or not, but that, but that, that was what exactly he taught, we were talking about. Mm, mm, mm. I, I think it would be something interesting if it goes internationally. But as of the last time I checked on on that, um, there was no, there was no much, uh, there was no um, obligation for the masters or the crew to be compensated because it is their own duty. It's just like it is your primary duty to salvage, I mean, to, 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 to rescue the vessel um, as yes. well. Um, so that is where we go into emergency drills and, um, and contingency plans as well. But yeah, it's going to be interesting if that's what's going on, not only in Egypt, but all parts of the world. Okay, sir. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. Um, it's been an interesting um, class today. Uh, we'll see ourselves um, um, next week um, as well. And if you have any question, just uh, put it in the in, in the chat um, as well. I see JJ opening his mouth. Um, while I was speaking, is this something you want to open a salvo company? Or Uma, you want to open your own salvo company? So No, 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 no. I don't have that intention. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I read about this and I think it's something that, yeah, it will be interesting if you open a salvo company. Just go out to the sea and, you know, we rescue and under the law, common law salvage will be compensated. So it's very interesting, you know. Of course, of course. Well, yeah. If only the company have the money, they don't have the money. One error will not end down. <laughs> <laughs>
because <laughs> Evelyn does not have that now or something that even demanding. I can imagine. I can imagine. That, 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 that's, that's, that's interesting. I'm going to post some questions on salvage law um, for us to try and look at and, um, and, and have a, a, a lovely discussion on, on, on it as well. Well, yeah, okay. thanks to everyone who came. Um, thanks, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you might not.